That's good. You're staying busy, and I like that you're staying really diverse, not only solely in one one uh, industry. You know? No, nah, definitely not. Because at the same time, like I mean, this is the time that I could actually learn like a new skill or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? So like, why not? All right, cool. So, hey, let's hit the record, John. Let's get going. Definitely. All right, so three, two, one. All right, guys. So we have Q Banks here, finally on the podcast, the creator and CEO of Wall Street Academy. Correct. Um, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong. You started with the company Forever and Profit, right? It's not started. Um, Forever and Profit is the main brand itself. It's kind of like umbrella. You know what I'm oh, saying? Okay, cool. And then under that, you have Technical Prosperity, which is Ryan, then Wall Street Academy. And then under Wall Street Academy, you have um, Profits for Life, which is Emil. And then Boston Up with Drew, which is Drew. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like an umbrella that actually has different platforms on it and whatnot. So everybody can actually learn to, to a certain extent, you know? Oh, that's yeah. dope, man. I mean, I've been following you for a long time. I've been training for six years. Yeah. I, I realize, like, I've been training for so long and doing all these things and learning so much and I've been silent and it's time to for me to speak my voice okay. and I've seen your journey bro I've seen I've seen it from the very beginning to now and it's like wow bro I should have been talking all along bro you know I mean um you got to have your own voice like, when it comes to this because at the same time like everyone um they see things differently like when it comes to the market so so it's feel like you're not wrong. Um, however, which way you look at the market, but at the same time, as long as you're making profit, you know what I'm saying? You're yeah. doing something right, you know? Yeah. Most Different definitely. language. Bro, so when did you start trading? I started trading, well, I started taking it seriously when I was 24, like uh, like October 2014-ish, nice. like around that time period. But at the same time, like, I've been new about the markets from when I was like 20 years old, which is um, 2010-ish, 2011. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like back then, I was like dabbling in like stocks or whatnot. But at the same time, I started, I started taking it seriously when I started seeing other people make money off it. You know, and back then it was like about a couple hundred dollars or three, four hundred dollar days, which was a lot more than what I was making. So it was like yeah. me seeing that was inspiration. You know what I'm saying? So like seeing like what it is now is just it's just way different numbers now. You know? Yeah. Speaking yeah. of that, you you did start from a, just being a normal Target worker, stocking shelves, and now you're nah. So Everyone, they, they seen Target, you know what I'm saying? Which kind of came after everything else. But at the same time, initially, like my first job was, I was working at a warehouse for about three years. Um, mm -hmm. that, that was my first job. And I tell people all the time, like that job kind of like, it taught me like the value of a dollar or whatnot. Um, that job was like, it gave me my first paycheck ever, which was like a $300 paycheck. And like me seeing that $300 paycheck was like, yo, listen, like if I, if I do this and make, I make all of this, you know what I'm saying? So like back then, like that was just like, yo, listen, like that was a lot of fucking money. But over time, um, we just started working more and more and more and more. And then at the same time, like we started actually realizing, like, yo, like we're really slaving over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they're barely paying yeah. us. So I feel like that was my, my, that was like the most important job for me because I built a lot of friendships there and whatnot. But at the same time, like I put a lot of work into working those three years at one job, and then I got fired. So. Me getting fired was a good thing though because that actually made me get out of the job because if I if, if I didn't get fired then I would have still been at that job because they made us feel comfortable you know what I'm saying so yep. that's what it was you know, bro, bro, being comfortable is the worst enemy anyone could have hundred percent that is the worst thing so uh, who 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 got you into trading did you have any anybody pitch you an idea because I remember nah. when I started pitching me a uh, energy drink and I was like bro nah. And it, and it snowballed into forex. Nah, um, it was more self self interest first, but at the same time, like back when I used to like do like dabble in stock options, um, you know, you you, you know about forex because forex is kind of like a cousin of stocks. You know what I'm saying? So you, you know about it. But at the same time, um, no one really pitched me it. But at the same time, like we had like a niche on on Facebook, so we seen people kind of like transition from, let's say back then it was probably. Um, I used to do MCA and that kind of stuff. So like people started do, like slowly transitioning to, to other stuff. So like I, I started seeing a, a few people started posting some profits, this and that, this and that. But at the same time, you don't have to sell me from something that I could actually understand because I was already familiar with the lingos and that kind of yeah. stuff. So like me yeah. seeing that, I was like, yo, listen, like let me just, you know, get back in it, you know? And then um, started taking it seriously again, but no one pitched me, it, you know, because I think it was like more self-interest because I was, I was already into that kind of stuff anyways. So kind of came, um, 
came easy. So you, so you never have to sell a person from what, what the, uh, for what they already want. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like you, you walk into a car dealership, you kind of know what you already want. Nobody has to sell you anything. You know? Speaking of the car, how you loving the Aventador, bro? I love it, man. Bad. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, um, I probably drive it like twice a week. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like every single drive is, is definitely worth it, though. That's definitely the car to have, man. I mean, I, I'm blessed to have my car. I love my car. I'm going big turbo soon. Oh, I see congrats. You. That's big. That's big. Yeah. It's going to be fun, bro. It's going to be fun. AMG game. I see it. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Bro, so um, when did you decide to start a brand and actually start making a name for yourself? Because, like I said, I I was trading for four or five years, and then I was like, you know what? Let me, like, make something. Yeah. Side trading, you know? So, with with me, it's a bit different. I I feel like everything kind of, like, fell in in my lap um, for the main fact that um, the main brand Forever Profit like it started from just a hashtag you know what I'm saying and um, that hashtag the hashtag was actually made for, because I was actually trading for a couple of days I was trading I think AU or EU or, or some pair like back then and, and, I, and I was in profit for four or five days and I was like yo shit I'm forever in profit so I started <laughs> a hashtag I started a hashtag and then that went, went it went viral and then from there I kind of like held on to the hashtag and then and then me and my um boy had started a little chat and then people just j- just wanted tips from us and how we're making profit and whatnot and eventually you know what i'm saying started getting a bit serious and then we opened the, the educational platform so it kind of like felt into our lap you know what i'm saying like back then like not a lot of people had educational platforms like how there's not like everybody have has a fucking course now so it's like yeah. back then it was literally like not that many people at all so so i feel like things back then was very very different um and it was very organic in a sense you know what i'm saying like you don't really have to see somebody else doing it to actually start it we just did it it was a bit more creative you could say you know yeah <laughs> yeah that's for sure one of my biggest um things that i could get down on myself about but hey you gotta start somewhere exactly exactly but at the same time like Everybody can, can add value to a certain extent. So like, no matter like if you want to trade or, or start a course or, you know what I'm saying, do like whatever. But at the same time, as long as you have good intentions to, of, of doing it and you're adding value to the niche to a certain extent about the way how you see things, then, I mean, that's all that really matters, honestly. Yeah, 100%, bro. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Definitely. So, like, for the new people coming, man, I, I, like, I've taught a lot of people myself. One thing I realized, bro, everybody coming into the market is like, I want to make this amount. Yeah, and that's so unrealistic. I feel like I think you need to go by percentages and you have realistic goals because all these kids are like I want to put my job right away and I want to be a day trader. Like, no, chill out. Yeah, that's that, that that's probably the worst thing that that you can do because um, it's like, and I told my homeboy this earlier. I was like, um, if you quit your quit your job immediately, like for one, that's pure stress. You know what I'm saying? Trading itself, yeah. knowing that you have no other income coming in, is a lot of stress. Like. Trading just every single day for money to pay your bills and this and this and that, this and that, like without any kind of other income coming in, that's stressful. So I, f- I feel like do- going that route is, is the worst route that you could actually take because even I never went that route. You know what I'm saying? I was working and trading for about yep. um, for about four or five months. I was trading and, and working at the same time, but you know, just making sure that I have time after work to put in to actually get better at my craft. You know? Speaking yeah. of after work, so like. Do you have um? Do you trade a certain session, a certain amount of pairs? Like, what what is your niche? Everybody um, has their, what's yours? Yeah, so like, I mean, my like my niche kind of like changes over time. Um, I mean, I mean, I used to trade AU for an entire year. I traded UJ for an entire year, and now like the pairs that I focus on now is probably um US thirty gold, um and GJ and UJ every now and then. But definitely GJ US thirty and gold is like a go to because it generates a lot of pips. It's a lot of volatility. And I don't need to, t- to be inside a market long. You know what I'm saying? Like you could yeah. low lot size, you, you can make thousand dollars a day. You know that. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. The other day, well, I'd say about like two, three weeks ago, I entered on the on the Dow Jones US 30 on like a, a micro lot, and I'm like, yo, how am I gaining this much? So the pick calculation is actually different because I never trade indices on a margin trade. And I was like, whoa, what's yeah, that? it's fun. Oh, it's fun. Crazy amount. Yeah. And um, I first found out about that because um, I, I was in California, actually, you know, I was teaching a class in California and I had my account and I was like, yo, listen, like I, I seen like, one of my boys trading in US 30 and I was like, yo, like, I, I, what is this right here? So I, I tried it out 
with a 0 0.01. And, and from that 0 0.01, I made like like $700. I was like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah. This shit is different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then yeah. I was like, yo, imagine, imagine, even though it'll take up a lot of margin, imagine a standard lot. Imagine a 0.10. I'm like, yo, listen, like this is going to be different. So that's when I started focusing on US 30 because I, like the, the volatility was just different. The the movement, the, the pit gains was just extraordinary, man. Yeah. I tried to do the calculation. I think a micro is is valued as almost a standard, like close to a standard. I'd say on on, on like a currency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it's equivalent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. That's crazy, bro. I was in shock. I was like, "What is going on?" Yeah, but yeah. also it kind of like makes it like a better like a risk to reward itself. But at the same time, like after trading US thirty for even like a couple weeks first, I was like, "Yo, listen, like personally, I'm not going back to currencies, bro." <laughs> because it makes no, it makes no I sense anymore. In a while. I yeah. haven't traded currencies in a while. I actually just had a trade last week on UCAD. I caught 442 pips. Yeah, and that was a big months, months, bro. Yeah, and and I feel like once you just dabble in something new and then like you you, you see the potential of it, man. Like listen, like certain things just become like yo, listen, like that's not even. It's not even it anymore, you know what I'm saying? Currency is not even it anymore. I'm like disgusted. Either metals or just indexes. That, that's funny you say that because I do see a trend leaving the currency markets, coming more into indexes and commodities. Yeah. And it's actually like turning me on because that's my shit. That's what I love. <laughs> you know? That's a good thing, man. Like, trust me, like, I feel like there's a lot more opportunities for like when, it, when a person's trading indexes and, and on metals now, anyways. So that's it. Yeah, definitely. It gives me more edge because I'm like an economist at heart. So I understand how to hedge to certain turmoils and timing in the markets to, you know, hedge my bet nice. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, see, like, that's crazy too because, like, I, I, I don't hedge because I, I feel like it's. For me, like, I've never got good at hedging. Like, I've never been a good hedger. Like, I, I remember, like, the first time I heard about hedging, like, back in 2014, like, I was like, yo, listen, like, I'll, I'll try it out and whatnot, but for some reason, like, you gotta be really good at, like, timing and whatnot to actually be able to hedge good. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, it's it takes skill. It takes skill, definitely. Yeah. Uh, actually, on the UCAD trade, I hedged that one. I had a short, long, I had a short, and then I had a little long. But when I say hedge, I mean more in the sense of, because I hold just metals, so when I'm margin trading them, that doesn't mean I'm not actually long the whole time because I have them in my safe. Good. Know? Okay. So like, so when I, when I short gold and stuff, I'm just hedging the valuation of my safe. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So like you're um, trading like the um, the uh, main trend, but at the same time the counter trend, you can actually take advantage of those as well. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, bro, do you have any like do you have a portfolio outside of just active trading? Do you have like long term? Holdings right nah, there. nah. Like I'm, I'm very just like you know, make what I'm making. After that, I'm done. Like I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, like I've never been into like the whole like long term portfolio because at the same time, like it's not like I'm trying to impress anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I trade, oh, yeah, yeah. I trade for myself, and and that's it. Make my money and do my thing. You know, like long term yeah. portfolios, uh, not really my thing. Not really my thing. Just day trading. You know, that's it. That's it. I did trade in. I have a portfolio, but no stocks at the moment. Yeah. I guess at least. Yeah, no stocks. Precious metals, crypto. But stocks, honestly, I feel like there's a bunch of stocks and everything that, that I, I will be investing in soon. Um, and only because, like, around this time period, like, stocks is, like, at pretty much at its all-time low. So, I mean, it's definitely, like, a time that you could definitely start to watch stocks to a certain extent to actually, you know, take definitely, advantage of yeah. it. For sure. Like, if, if anyone's looking to get into stocks, I would definitely start picking the ones you like. I do think we're going to go much lower in the coming months. Definitely. That's just okay. Definitely, but yeah. if, if, you, if you set up, you know, a bag of like, I want this, 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 you'll be able to get them cheap. Yeah. 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 Like certain stocks that, that were like $49 is only like around $7 now. Like shit like that, exactly, you know, it, yeah. airlines and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, even MGM, um, <laughs> All those stocks are just pretty much super like on discount, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Especially because they're government back, bro. They're gonna get bailed out. You know, the Fed's gonna bail them out, and we're gonna have another 08 try and recover the markets. And uh, luckily, if you pick the right stocks that are getting bailed out, you're gonna make some money. Exactly. Problem is, yeah, we're at zero interest rates, so bailouts can't last so long. Say it again. Right now, we're at zero interest rates, so bailouts. Ooh. Ooh. That, that's wild too, man. Because like, um, when's the last time it's it's been at zero? Bro, it's oh eight. Oh eight, damn. 
It's gonna be interesting. And, uh, it's gonna be interesting. Like, I think we might have a negative, bro. People yeah. have to start some weird shit with their cash. Once you're negative, bro, you gotta do some weird shit. So yeah, you're gonna get paid on loans, bro. So what happens when you're um? It, it's negative interest rates, though. So, if you, so negative interest rates are basically you take out a loan for a hundred thousand dollars, you pay back ninety thousand, you keep ten. Bro, the banks are paying you to take money out, bro. That's crazy, man. You're yeah. writing up a loan r- real quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. why not? That's how desperate they are to make That's people wild. spend. Yeah. Without spending, there's no time. So it's- anyone with bad credit, I would definitely build it because the lower interest rates go, the cheaper money gets. And you won't have to pay the things back. And they're literally paying you to make money. Exactly. And, and I feel like it's good for people that's already in a, a position as well that they could like literally take out a loan just because. And then to pretty much just put it towards like a, a certain business or a certain investment and then... <laughs> Give them back like the bare minimum. Bro, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just waiting until it gets right. I haven't done anything yet, but I am. For yeah. Sure. Soon enough, man. Soon enough. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, maybe I'll get an SB like you. Nah. <laughs> that's be fun. That's be fun. But you got to have like a commitment if, if you're trying to get that kind of car, though. Like, as far as like knowing that all the parts are expensive, knowing that, you, that, that you're not going to want to drive it every single day, knowing that you're spending thousands a month. You know what I'm saying? Like, knowing that every single time that, that you take it out, you have to fill it back up with a tank of gas. That tank is gone every time that you drive it. You no know? Way. <laughs> That's wild. But, um, so going back to, like, the, the whole tr- the beginning of trading, um, another question that I got a lot is, like, when am I going to start turning a profit? I told them, and I, this is my honest, my journey. It took me three years to actually become profitable. The first yeah. two and a half, I was break even, just you know, taking two, two steps forward, three back. Yeah. And I was just really fun. But once I found my little edge and, and how to really work it, and then I started turning a profit. So I would say it took me about three years to become a profitable trader. What okay. was yours? Um, like six months, seven months. <laughs> that was like. And I say that as far as um, me actually being able to consistently make profit on a certain account, you know what I'm saying? Um, and being able to actually withdraw from that account. I'm not saying that account actually is still alive t- today because accounts from back then is definitely blown um, just from fucking up, over leveraging and that kind of stuff. At the same yeah. time, um, I felt like I was making a good amount of money from trading um, within like my like my fifth, seventh month, like, like in that time frame, definitely. That's nice. That's nice. I mean, everybody's journey is different. Yeah. No, nah, listen, at the same time, you can never compare because at the same time, um, you got to understand like everyone learns differently. It's kind of like saying um, everyone is not going to be at the same rate in like a math class or, or like a history class or anything like that. But at the same time, like how they actually take in knowledge is, is very, very different. You know what I'm saying? So you, so you, you can never compare two people when it comes to trading, but this is literally just like another subject, but also it's a very complex subject as well. So they have to actually be able to taking information and be able to actually comprehend how it actually m- makes sense to make a person profitable. So I feel like that's what it's based on, you know? Yeah, that's another thing I'd say. If, if you're a new person coming into the trading, don't compare yourself to the person next to you, the person on Instagram, your friend, don't. Just worry on your journey and, and you'll get to the end. Yeah, but Instagram is like probably the um, worst place to start your yeah. tra- trading journey because you're comparing yourself immediately because for one, once a person actually starts trading, like they compare themselves to um, Ricky792 um, on, on Instagram because he, he just yeah, yeah. made $5,000 and shit like that. When, when, it come, when it comes down to it, you don't know that person's financial situation. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So at the same time, they might be willing to actually risk a, a lot more to make a bigger profit so you can never really compare yourself because that, um, th- that's going to slow you down dramatically. And speaking of yeah. Instagram, like I've, I've had so many people reach out to me and been scammed. You know, the whole the whole name Forex have, has been so like tarnished and almost to the point where it's like people think of it as like a multi-level marketing company or some shit when it really is just another financial instrument. I feel like Instagram and, and, and people that have been scammed have gave Forex a bad name, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why like um, whenever a person like um, they like, oh. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not. Like, I fucking trade by myself. I own the Wall Street Academy. But like, no. The they don't even understand that yeah. it's a market by itself. They yeah. think it's a company. Yeah. It's, it's fucked up. And, but, you, 
that there's MLMs and then there's educational platforms. It's two different things. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, I'm not like trying to tar- tarnish I'm on name, but at the same time, it's already tarnished. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> but I'm just saying like there's a difference between an MLM company that pretty much um, relies on re- recruiting and that kind of stuff to actually pay their residuals and whatnot versus the actual educational platform that's only re- requires you actually getting educated on the content and being able to actually make profits out of market. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no kind of like reaching out to somebody else. Hey, tell, I'm, I'm tell your sister, tell your brother, this and that, this and that. No, yeah, it's none sure. of that. You know, that's what's extra. Yeah. Like I, I, the other day I had some kid reach out to me. He's like, yo, you're fraud. You're, you're, you're telling people to buy and do all this shit. I'm like, dude, what do you, you don't even know what I'm doing. That's, yeah. that's how I feel. you don't even know what you're saying. But that's the like, thing though. Like, I've learned over the, the years, right? Even like um, my homeboy said this as well. Um, he said, the person that hates on you is never above you. You know Damn. what I'm saying? The, the, the person that hates on you is never above you. They're always yeah. below you to a certain extent. They either, they either um, want what you have money-wise or just life, something. You know what I'm saying? Like They're never better than you to a certain extent. Like It's always the people that's below you that's trying to come up. That's gonna to try to tarnish your name to a certain extent, or even like discredit you to actually come up when that yeah. never works. One hundred percent, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, out of you, you've taught a lot of classes. You, you, yeah. you're obviously you yeah. I mean, built your hundreds and done your thing. Yeah. Out of how many times do you see? Because not everybody has the same work that they do. You nah. can see there's something special that will actually take. Always, you always, always. Do you think you always find that person in a, each class or? Definitely. No, no. It's like the first like two days of classes. Normally, I, I could tell who who's gonna pass the class and who's not. Like I tell yeah. people that all the time because based on how how many questions they're asking, like how into the content that they really are, like have they done the extra work to actually you know be ahead of the class? Like are they sitting in, in the front of the class? Like I look at all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you could you could point out to certain students that, that, that are, that pretty much have that edge to actually get further beyond the class than others. You know what I'm saying? It's obvious. It's yeah. obvious. That's what I'm saying, bro. Worth ethic is everything in this market, bro. Cause people will start, yeah. but never finish. Yeah. Or they'll start and not see results right away and be like, all right, bro, I, I've tried it. I tried it. Like, no, you didn't fucking try it. If yeah. you tried it, you No, I mean, I speak on that all the time. I was like, people don't start taking it seriously until they either, um, have like some kind of big profit or they have a withdrawal. As far as y- you see the withdrawal come out of the um, broker account and then all the way to the bank account. Like as, yeah. if you see either a big profit or a withdrawal and you actually see that it hits the bank account, then it's going to spark like, oh shit, this shit yeah. is actually yeah. real. You know? Yeah. And, and, and then yeah. you're going to start taking it seriously to actually make bigger profits to, to, to just put a little bit more effort into it. A little bit more work ethic, and then you could actually make a bigger profit, knowing that it actually hit the bank account. That's hysterical, bro. Yeah. Because last last podcast uh, with Austin, I had said um, 2017 was my biggest year. Like I had a six figure year. I was like, bro, uh, and you're right. It clicked for me until I had a big year. Yeah. And th- that's true. It, but it takes time. It took me years to see that kind of year. You but know? That, that's the thing, though. So I feel like when it comes to me, um. I never had to see the the big profits and that kind of shit because I, I, I understood the concept, you know what I'm saying? I understood like, yo, this plus this equals profit. So if I get better at analyzing A and B, C yeah. will definitely be bigger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, understand like that simple concept. So like, it never took me like a long time to like be like, yo, listen, like I need to see somebody make it first to actually believe that this shit is actually real. No. Nah. I, I understood the concept and pretty much, you know, over time, let's get better at that. And then that's going to actually better your profits. It's as simple as that. And yeah. um, I feel like people that don't understand that simple concept, like those are the people that, that want to have that one friend, like, all right, you do it first and then I'm hey, letting yeah. you know, you know, yeah. like it's, it's so real right there. Everyone has that one friend. You, you do first, I'll watch and then I'll see. You. Yeah. Like they're getting crumbs, you know, but by, by that time, like, I mean, I, I have people that, um, been seeing me trading for five, six, seven years, and and till this day they try to hit me up and say like, "Yo, listen, like I'm gonna start, bro." I'm like, "All right, let me know." You know, like I put I put no effort, like I put no energy for it because at the same time, if a person has been seeing like what's been going on and seeing like you know a person's growth as far as overall like real life growth, not fucking just Instagram fake growth, 
real life go growth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you shouldn't question anything. You know what I'm saying? Like it shouldn't have to. It shouldn't take you sitting around and keep on watching the person to believe that something is working or something is real. Like yo, like just fucking like look around. Like you know what I'm saying? Like shit's yeah, real. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Bro, so what's your what's your, your approach? We're, I'm almost set up here on the questions. I, I'm I'm honestly just free balling yeah. right now. I don't <laughs> it's all good. Nothing down, bro. I'm just being completely authentic. What's what's your what's your strategy? Like, are you swing trader? Are you scalper? How long um, do you normally know hope? Like, like when it comes to me, because I actually did um like a podcast the other night, and I'll I, I was telling my boy and everything. I was like, first time, like when it comes to me, I don't consider m- myself um just one of those three. Like, I feel like I'm a very, very dynamic trader because at the same time, like, like with like my trading style, like I incorporate all three types of, of the styles in like my trading style. As far as like my entries are, are scout based. You know what I'm saying? Like they have to be precise minimum drawdown. Like I pretty much have to understand like my candlestick analysis to a certain extent on lower time. I have to pretty much be able to understand all that. But also like I'm very, very sufficient when it comes to my intraday trading because I, I'm very, very good at holding orders and actually maintaining orders and scaling in also, but also I'm very, very good at understanding the bigger picture, which is like that, that swing type of mentality as well. So like I understand pretty much all three concepts. Um, so I don't ever consider myself as like one type. I'm very, very dynamic with how I go about things. And yeah, yeah like I'm just a dynamic trader. Like that's what I consider myself. That's a, you know, I relate with that a lot, bro, because I do the same thing. I, I, I find my entries like a scalper on the smaller time frames. But I always have it line up with a bigger picture. Exactly. And yeah. I, just managing the trade. Yeah. One thing that one thing that I noticed that I I, I still um, grind my teeth on is uh, closing out a position when I could have held it an extra day or two or even a week. Yeah. And it's like what the fuck. Yeah. See, I, I think you'll never get over that. I don't really hold positions for like weeks now. You know what I'm saying? But but like um a few days or like four or five days and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like I'm I'm definitely with it. But at the same time, like. When it comes to like holding positions for weeks and weeks and weeks, like, damn, like, you gotta have patience, bro. You gotta have patience and, oh. and get ready for the swap fees. Like, if you have positive swap fees, that's different. But at the same time, like, negative swap fees is like, man, listen, I don't even wanna hold this any longer because it's just eating me so, alive. So that's the thing, I actually pay attention to the interest rates of each currency. So a lot of times I look for positive swaps. Yeah, those are, those are always dope because it seems like, like they're paying you to actually hold trades now. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just the difference of the interest rate between each currency. That's the beauty of yeah. it. That's why I love the economics behind it because you could actually find a little little niche that not a lot of people talk about. De- definitely, definitely. And it, yeah, and it works out because like little things of just like knowing that you're about to get in the trade and it has positive swaps. Like this makes me just want to just you know just hold it even longer. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like that just gets a person it's excited. Crazy, bro. Yeah, this is crazy. And, and that's yeah. the benefit, man. Hold on. So what's up, John? What you got for us? <laughs> quiet over here. Quiet over here. Um, one thing I can say is, you saw you had a hundred thousand dollar day. Yeah, yeah. The, like, what led to that? Like, what made you hold that trade? The, what was the difference? The hundred thousand dollar day. I feel like um, I tell people all the time. Like um, the biggest thing that even made me even be able to get a hundred thousand dollar day was um, you have to be comfortable with seeing red. You know what I'm saying? Like, what I mean. Like what I mean by that is like be comfortable with seeing red. Be be comfortable with a, a, a with like a a position and drawdown for a certain amount of time. Like I I was comfortable with seeing that. So at the same time, like me being down like seventeen thousand dollars, I pretty much understood that like the, the maximum that I was willing to lose on that trade was like around twenty five thousand. Right? Okay. Because the count at the time was seventy seven thousand. So I was like, all right. So like I'm willing to to, to lose like on, on twenty five thousand because at the end of the day, like this account started from only fifteen thousand. So it was all profit regardless. So like, I, I didn't care about losing 25,000 regardless of if it's money or not. Like it's, it's money yeah, that I made in the market. It's profit. So I don't give a fuck about it because my initial investment is still all the way down there. So, um, it went negative 17 K like overnight. I, I was in that position for probably like about a day and a half. Did you um, sleep? I, barely. Um, but at the same time, like things actually, um, I barely slept that night, but volume actually kicked in like, coming up to NY session and pretty much like after that shit just fucking fell like hell because at the same time like I was confident about my my order because things were still like lining up for my opportunity and things were not inside like the the stop loss zone and that kind of stuff so everything was pretty much solid for the direction that I was actually anticipating but um but yeah like I had to just wait it out NY session hit 
big ass drop. I was like, whoa. And after that, I went to the gym. I started to work out a little bit. And yeah, man, like I hit the hundred thousand dollars, hundred six thousand actually, while I was working out. I'm at the gym. And yeah. Probably move your stop to like a safety safety zone, right? Say it again. Probably move your stops to like a safety zone. No, actually, no, no, because at the same time, like once it actually hit like even a hundred thousand, I was like, yo, listen, like I don't want to be in this anymore. Like. I've never hit a. <laughs> I've never hit a, a six-figure day before, so I was like, "Yo, listen, like you know what? I'm done." <laughs> and then yeah. folded everything. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the crazy part about it is that, like, um, I, I think about like six hours or seven hours later, it dropped another like eight, um, See, eighty bro, pips or ninety pips. That's the thing I'm talking about. That's the thing I'm talking about. How do you not? That gets me so mad because I'm right. I should have been right. Like held it longer. No, but that's what. That's the thing. But that's greed. That's greed, that think, but <laughs> that was greed because at the same time, like I just hit a milestone. Why, why should I try to keep on going? Because at the same time, if it went to one hundred and six thousand, it would have pulled back to like around seventy thousand or even sixty thousand, and then I would have been like, "Fuck, I missed out all, <laughs> yeah. all kind of money." And then I would have closed out, pissed off, and then it would have fell again. Then it would have been up like around two hundred thousand. So I'm like, listen, like I hit a milestone, I'm satisfied because who the fuck makes that in a day? That's yeah. what I think about. So I always try to think broke. Like, yo, listen, like, this is $100,000. Like, why, why do I need more? You know okay. what I'm saying? And then I'm satisfied. I feel like you have to be satisfied with a certain amount of profit to actually be able to close out. And, and I was satisfied. Like, I didn't need more than that. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. could, pay, that could pay bills for a couple of years. You know? Yeah, you're like, yeah, man. I'm not stressing that. That's not, that's, that's motivation. Yeah. That's but, motivation. I gotta get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like, ha- happens in time. Like, I wasn't really anticipating it because I had a hundred thousand dollar opportunity that happened a couple days before that day. But um, I never held out. I-, I closed super early and I missed out on everything else. Um, but at the same time, like, I tried to actually, you know, make sure that my mental was 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 stable the entire time and not try to think, you know, like, oh shit, like, what if this spikes against me and all kind of other shit. I try to think positive and just, you know. Keep my like, just, just, just try to keep like my um. Yeah. You're zen. You're no, zen. no. Try to keep my greed level down because yeah. I thought about upping the lot size even more because I was up forty lots. You know what damn. I'm saying? So I was like, damn, like should I add more? Should I add more? So I was like, you know what? Let me just try to not fuck up my margin and be satisfied. Did you get any type of margin call? No. Anything happen? Nah, not at all. No, 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 no. But remember, like the count was at seventy-seven thousand. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I was only down twenty-five, like um, on seventeen thousand. So at the same time, yeah, it was yeah. I had a lot of margin left, probably over about yeah, a one thousand four hundred percent margin. I, I was chilling. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Since we're speaking on, on things of this nature, bro, what do you normally risk percent-wise on any given trade? So that's the thing. Like, I don't really go based off of percentages. Like, I don't like that. Um, I just, it's just not me. Um, and like uh. You can never really, like, people always say, like, oh, risk 1% or something that. I'm like, listen, what the fuck is my money? Like, you know, I like to risk a certain amount of money every single trade. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I have, if I'm starting off with a $25,000 account, okay, like, I'll probably risk, like, $3,000 each trade. You know, or $4,000 or, or 5K each trade because that's how I actually go about things. Like, I don't like percentages. So anywhere from, like, 3 to 5% roughly. Yeah, okay, like, yeah. Yeah. Change it. Yeah, like, and it's based off of every single entry. Every single entry de- determines my risk. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if I know that I have a fucked up entry, like, I know, like, God damn, like, this risk might be out the window. You know, like, yeah. you know, yeah. it's always changing. It's always changing. So, like, it's never like this one set amount every single trade. It's based on how good my entry is and how much, um, you know, time to actually put into get it to, to um, get that entry. So, you know, I don't really try to, you know, be too strict on, on myself, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's good, bro. Yeah. I mean, me personally, I try and keep my risk always the same. But don't get me wrong. If I see a trade that looks like a fresh cooked meal, I'm going to put a little bit more risk on it. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? Trust yeah. me. Because um, at the end of the day, like, once you pretty much, I feel like, understand how much you're losing, you could pretty much um, be able to, to, to scale in more and more and more on that trade, knowing that um, it's still going to um, respect the amount of, money that you're trying to lose like that certain trade or the percentage wise yeah. also like so you can yeah. definitely be able to scale in if you have that skill that skill to even do that you know yeah. All right. so i mean is there anything that you wanted to say on your end any questions for us anything um yeah man like um 
Uh, tell me a little bit about y'all. Like, cause I see that you guys have a team now. And you guys have a course that that's on that actually focuses on pure fundamentals and whatnot, also, which is pretty cool. Which could definitely help out a lot of people that you know that don't really know about fundamentals. So yeah, can you yeah. speak on that, that a little bit. So yeah, so I, all right, like you know, I started forex about six years ago. I've been doing it in the dark, quiet, hitting you know, becoming a profitable trader, paying off my car, yeah. getting, and I'm, I'm leveling up, and I'm like, bro. I, I should be telling people, like, I should be helping people. And one thing I realized when I was getting into a lot of chat rooms and many different groups, when I would speak, people would look at me like, yo, who is this kid? What do he say? Like, they were coming to me personally. I would get kicked out of chats yeah. because I, the, the people who started it, I'll make them look dumb. Because, like, I, I understood currencies, I understood economics, and yeah. I understood driving factors behind the stock, behind the commodity, whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah, like the so, more in, in depth stuff that no one really tries to like dig into. Yeah, exactly, yeah. bro. Yeah. So, Dijon over here, he's like the, the guru of fucking editing. He's like the go to man for that. So, I was like, bro, let's do something. He's like, all right, I'm with it. I was like, let's go 50 50. How about that? He's like, all right, let's do it. So, I, we went 50 50, we opened up uh, S Corp, started the business, and we got an educational platform to teach. Not only technicals, because I am a technical trader. Like technicals, I'd rather have technicals before anything else. Definitely. But I, I that, to me, that's like a. If you only have technicals, that's like a car with no gas. Yeah. I, I love the fundamental aspect of it. I love understanding the economic data that's being released and yeah. how these things are driving currencies or yeah. stock, whatever. That's all the same shit, bro. Yeah. It all, yeah. Definitely. Because so like, I just, even like when it comes, we put it all together. That's it. Even like when it comes to on fundamentals, honestly, I feel like on fundamentals, like I took it like a bit more seriously, like when it came to me, you know, trading gold more and trading US 30 more, I'm like, okay, those are driven more from, you know, like the big financial stuff and whatnot. So I was like, you know what, let me just focus more on the articles and like really understand like what's happening on like the, the, the macro economics of stuff, you know, so yeah. I can actually understand like, you know, what the fuck is this? doing you know what i'm saying like just yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I understand the technical aspect of things like that's all that i've been trading for for forever but the fundamental and aspect of things is definitely new and um i feel like that definitely brought my edge um to a certain extent like when, when it comes to trading to a different level because i'm understanding two different platforms now and i bring everything together to actually get that bomb ass trade you know or yeah. that can maybe be a bit more confident with my direction of bias you know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah, all that, that helps that, out. That's, that's a, what I use it as for as well. I use the technicals to find my entries and I use the fundamentals to back why I'm entering. But like, see, when I was trading Forex, I would look at a currency, bro. Like, all right, so let's say we have the Canadian dollar. I would look at the Canadian dollar as the stock for their economy. Okay. So if you were to analyze a stock, what are you going to do? You're going to analyze the company. What's the company doing? So I would look at the economy. A revenue the economy. and this and that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I would look at the Canadian dollar as stock for Canada and I would analyze that stock. Definitely. Do I want to hold a Canadian dollar? No. Cool. So I'm going to be buying dollar over that. Yeah. Or whatever it may be. So then I realized it's a bit complicated to have two countries and understanding two currencies when I could just stick to a commodity where it's just a, a simple, easy, you know, one sandwich. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Or just like an index like yeah. the, the Dow Jones or the S&P yeah. or the Russell 2000. And those are so easy because it's just one economy. I don't have to fucking worry about what this government yeah, said. Balance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. But it's, it's awesome. I, I got addicted to learning that. Dijon, too. We, we, bro, we broke down the whole central banking system, yeah. how corrupt it That's is. That's actually what got me into fund fundamentals is when I understood that the history behind the Federal Reserve and how they're basically punishing the working people. Yeah. So that's what really got me really interested in fundamentals, and I just like understanding how all the central banks lower interest rates and it causes our dollars to be worth way less. Yeah. So when you look at BMW, it's a hundred thousand dollars for BMW. It's not because it's prettier; it's because our dollars are worth that much less. Damn, that is wild. But yeah. at the same time, like I mean, like listen, like so, like y'all should like definitely like taking like that knowledge, to, like you know, really you know, up your your income. Trust me, like, that's where it gets interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. You guys know that's a lot. Why no, that's why I'm so. That's why I reached out to you the other day about buying some gold and silver. Yeah. So I'm I'm on record right now. This thing's recording. Gold and silver. Silver will be three figures for sure. Gold will surpass at least three thousand, and I can almost put my life on it. Oh, okay. Within within, within the, the coming years, yeah. I don't give it to you at all. Yeah. I'm almost 100 percent certain that that will happen because 
I understand the economy. When yeah. our dollar does bad, gold does Definitely. well. Yeah, yeah. By default. Yeah, that's just like, um, you know, like where the people actually have all their funds transferred to to actually, you know, back them up. But at the same time, like go. gold, yeah, exactly. gold is one thing that's always going to remain valuable, honestly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 5,000 years plus. Yeah. And where we are in today's economic status, it looks like complete shit, bro. Like, we are printing more dollars. The more we print, yeah. the more fuck up we, we do our economy. The 100%. more it becomes. 100%. So, the more we print, I mean, Argentina do the same thing. Zimbabwe, uh, Venezuela. Look at them, bro. They're making baskets for money because they have no purchasing power yeah. Their Their central bank just printed. Just like, bah, 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 yeah. bah, bah. Now they're over here like, I mean, we can't spend shit. It's just know? useless now. It's useless exactly. Yeah. Well, the US yeah. is headed there. And it's sad to say that. We're about at least a forty-five percent that we will head to hyperinflation and have some crazy ass shit. What do you think about when they um spoke on the digital currency? I'm worried about that. Yeah, a little bit too much centralization for the government. Yeah, already watching us through banks and stuff. Imagine you having everything digital. It'll, it'll kind of like resemble China because China's like a communist country. Yeah, they digitally watch everybody. Let's say if you say something controversial or you make controversial content. And they could just be banking, take away a bank account, take away. Wow, that sucks. Like, that 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 really fucking sucks, honestly. Like, bro, if, if we go to to digital currency, which we most likely probably will in the future, because that's where technology is headed, and you don't have something to hedge against that, then you just give all your power to them, and they don't give a fuck about you, bro. Yeah. You gotta protect yourself, protect your family first. Yeah, Wonder yeah. So just invest smart. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I feel like people should also um. Because I'm on live as well, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like when it comes down to it, like, you know, I feel like there is going to eventually be another recession, you know what I'm saying? Like, very bad as well. But I feel like people should already, like, you know, get your money in order so you can pretty much, you know, capitalize for when things get back stable, you know what I'm saying? Um, That's going to be definitely, like, another opportunity for a lot of people because um, a lot of people, they they missed out on 07, 08, 09 market, you know? Yep. Um, so this is definitely gonna be like a huge opportunity for a lot of people again. So it's gonna be definitely interesting. For sure. Now, b- before we end this real quick, one more thing I gotta for say that. is we are gonna go into a recession for sure. But one thing I do see happening, we may head towards deflation, which means all assets will depreciate. So if you gold or your property, whatever it is, it's going to go down. Yeah. But when we do go into that stage, they're going to inflate it, and we're going to go into an inflationary economy. And those commodities, those assets that you hold, gold, silver, house, whatever, land, are going to boom. Like Bitcoin in 2017, boom. Woo. So, Bitcoin. That, Bitcoin to the moon. Bitcoin to the yeah. moon. <laughs> so, yeah, you're smart for telling your, your uh, followers to, to get cash. Bro, don't leave your cash in the bank, please. Like I, like, I like you. I want your family to do good. I want your followers to do good. Everybody... <laughs> Take a good portion of your cash, take it out of the bank. Yeah, man, like, listen. Even... Yeah, man, like, cash is very important. I tell people all the time, like, you got to have, yeah. just bring, <laughs> bring some cash, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to have some <laughs> some cash. Cash is good. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. take out some yeah. cash, keep it on, on hand, just in case, because it's very important. <laughs> you know? Because um, at the end of the day, like, who, myself now. <laughs> who knows what's going to happen, you know what I'm saying? So take out some cash, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Keep it away, you know? Yeah. Cash is but, king. That's what it is. It is. Especially in, when you, when opportunity hits. It is. Exactly. But before we head out, bro, where can my followers find you? Um, on Instagram, at QBanks, C-U-E-B-N-K-S. Um, that's definitely, like, my main platform, you know what I'm saying? So definitely give me a follow. I appreciate that. And well, you do got a website, so they can follow oh, yeah. you there. Um, yeah, um, check out the, the website as well, wsatraining.com. Um, that's the main educational platform, Wall Street Academy. So definitely check it out. No, perfect, yeah. bro. I really appreciate you coming on and taking the time for the little guys. Got you, man. It's highly- All right, got you, man. All right, peace, peace, peace. Appreciate you. Yeah. Woo! So that I think. Uh, that interview, that, that podcast is going to be up soon. Appreciate everybody for coming on. You know what I'm saying? Ho- ho- hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Quarantine boring as fuck. Um, yeah, man. So if y'all have any questions on, on anything that we spoke over, definitely um, just send me a DM or some shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to holler at y'all. Peace out, peace out, peace out.